Connor, we're going to create your perfect defender. The only rule is you can't use the same player twice. So okay. it can be current, it can be pass. It's okay. totally up to you. We'll start with the right foot. A goal. You know, I'm going to put in. I'm going to put in Jamie, Jamie Callagher in terms yeah. of his, in terms of his right foot. I really am because I followed. Like I said, I'm a, I was a Liverpool fan growing up, and I followed him. And I think what he done for Liverpool, being a one club man all his all his career, was was absolutely fantastic. And and, he, and he's a real real top player at the time as well. You've got a decent ping on you, don't you? Yeah, it's all, it's, it's, all <laughs> right. it's something where. It's quite important to how we play. And we've got, we've got a few players who can do it, by the way. All the back three can do it as well. We've got Ruben Neves, who did an unbelievable pass for the ball as well. So it's a big way of how we play, but we need to keep on doing it. When you hit that diagonal ball in a game and mm. it lands perfectly on the feet, do you have a little moment to yourself and go, oh, that was a good ball? Uh, I think, yeah, <laughs> you know when it's a good ball or, yeah. or a bad ball, do you know what I mean? The best one is where it just drops over a full-back's head and then Doc or Diamond or whoever's playing can actually run onto the ball. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The floaty ones are quite hard because then the lads have got to edit down one yeah. touch, play it one touch. It's a tough one to deal with. So that's the best one. And when I get one of them, it's, it feels quite nice. Right. Left peg. Yeah. Left peg for me was Laporte. Yeah. I, I hope he's left pegged. I yeah. hope he's left footed there. I think he's an amazing defender. I really do. I follow him and I try and look at how he plays and do what he does because he's playing an amazing, amazing, I know he's injured at the minute, but he's playing an amazing team with Man City under, under a world class manager. So Laporte for me, I think he's brilliant. How big of a miss is he for City at the minute? It's huge, it's huge, but I think if you're going to miss that type of calibre of player, it's going to be a huge miss. It really is when they're out and they're injured and things like that, and it'll be a massive boost to them when they come back. But I just think how he plays the game, how he sees the game, what he does, how he steps out from the back, how cool he is on the ball, I think he's a, he's a brilliant defender. So when he comes back and City have got a corner, yeah. are you marking him? To be honest, we go zonal. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we go zonal, so we, we've only got a few, a few marks who, who were there to, Delay really, and then the three lads are on the six yard box, then try and try and tap the ball. Moving on, strength. Yeah. Do you know I'm going to go with Big Bolly for us? Yeah. Yeah, Big Bolly, 100%. I'm always going to put the big man in. He's, a, he's an absolute tank <laughs> and a fantastic defender, he really mm. is. He's a, he's a pleasure to play with. What he's brought to our football club has been amazing in the last two, three years. And like I said, his pure strength gets him out of so much trouble, and he's a brilliant defender. Is he a bit of a beast in the gym? Do you know what? You know, if he lifted weights, he'd go too big. Do you know what I mean? He's oh, like really? A, yeah, he's like, we've got a couple of Adamas the same, but if you go in the gym, he does quite a lot on his legs to, to be powerful. What a nice to be problem strong. that is. Yeah, it's, going it's in the gym, you're like, oh, yeah, I can't lift too many weights, I'm already he, massive. If he'd done a few days, he'd, he'd really blow up a little bit. So, <laughs> so uh, but like I said, just his, his, his pure strength and his football brain as well. I mean, he's not just, he's not just a strong person, he's got a football brain, he wants to play and wants to do things. Yeah. And he talks to me as much as I talk to him as well. Pace. Uh, I was going to say myself. After yeah, that. Yeah. Think, no, no, you've got a bit. That, yeah. No, the pace for me is uh, he's, he's Van Dyke, right? But only because you see his pace when he needs to, but he doesn't really need to use it that much. No. If you know what I mean? It's there for him. He reads the game so well. He he comes round. He, he's always in control of his opposition. And I watch quite a lot of him, obviously, with it being Liverpool as well. And, and I love it when he's one v one, and he always gives the. The, the, the opposing player two, three yards on him mm. and says, right, come on, you've got to beat me to go anywhere past me. And he's always in control, whether that's delaying for people to come round and help him or whether that's him going 1v1 to defend someone. What's your pace on FIFA this year? Uh, we were actually, the only reason I know is because we were doing it the other day is 47, yeah. So. 47? I, no, that's all right. It's all right for me. Believe me, I know. 47? Yeah, it's all right. It's no problem. Yeah, yeah. but as a professional footballer, that's, it's 47 is way too low for you. No, it, You're it, not that slow. No. <laughs> it is what it is. Benno's slower than me on it, so I'm all right. <laughs> so just keep it that way. Just keep it that Look, way. there's someone worse off than you. Yeah, that's so it's all right. Fine. No problem. Yeah. The leadership skills of? Uh, for me, John Terry. Mm. John Terry. Amazing footballer, amazing footballer, but more of a leader of what, what he'd done for Chelsea in them years. I think when Mourinho come in and how he adapted his game and how he grew, I think as, as a footballer, an amazing defender and what he'd done in his career was, was absolutely fantastic. So I don't think anybody can argue with what he's done no. and how much of a leader he was for Chelsea Football Club. And yeah, definitely him, yeah. You're obviously a leader at your football club, Wolves, your captain. What are your roles and responsibilities? Uh, quite a lot, really. I think I, I try and look at myself more as a, a friend. I don't want people mm. saying to me, he needs to be doing this, he needs to be doing that. I'm there for people whenever I'm needed, and all the boys know that at our football club. But in terms of doing things off the pitch, you get the usual usual jobs you need to do, tickets, or, and Christmas dues, <laughs> and, Christmas dues and, th and, and things like that, and that's fine, there's no problem. But I think in the changing room, it's more helping people as much as possibly can. We've got quite a lot, lot of foreign players mm. who come over, and they know as soon as they come in, I drop them a little message or I give them a little ring just to make sure they're all all right. And if they need me at any point, I'm, I'm here. And I think that's the most important thing to know. They've got, they've got someone there, a friend, who can, who can help them. You mentioned the Christmas do. It's just around the corner. What are the plans? Do you know what? It's tough. We've actually been trying to sort it out and we've got no space to have a Christmas do at the minute. So we're struggling to, to get one in because, because the Europa League and yeah. games are coming thick and fast. We play a lot of the games on a Sunday before Christmas. So 
it's a tough one to get, get some in, but the, the lads are pressuring me, they're really, really are, so we're going to need to sort something out in the next couple of weeks. You need to extend one of those midweek Thursday night games. Thursday night, yeah. For Shiktas, you're like, well, should we stay in Turkey but for a Braga's little bit? Braga's the yeah. one, Braga in Portugal, Braga. I'm, sure, I'm sure the Portuguese lads can sort us out. Yeah, there, yeah, they must know a few people out there, they must yeah. know a few little discotheques. <laughs> You'd like to think so, too. wouldn't you? You'd like to think so, but I don't know if they'd, uh, they'd take on the responsibility, to be honest. Next one, heading. Yeah, I'll go with with someone who's in this day and age now, and I played with him at Sheffield United as well. It was Big H, Big Harry Maguire. Big Harry Maguire. Yeah, Big Harry, yeah. I think he made a bit of a name for himself in the, in the World Cup with his... Yeah, slap it. With, with, <laughs> you said that, not me. <laughs> uh, with, with his head in, but I just think how he, how he outmuscles people. But he, he's the same, he reads it. The reason he heads it so well for me is because he reads it so well as well. He always knows when to do it, but he's a big man, a real yeah. big man. And I witnessed it first time at Sheffield United where I think everybody knew when he was there he was going to go on to, to bigger and better things and, and, and really kick on. You see him now at Manchester United, he's, he's a fantastic footballer, but one of his big assets is his head in the ball, which, which is brilliant for him. He's got a massive head. <laughs> it is big though, isn't it? It helps, doesn't it? It, yeah, it does help. You must come up to me at a corner and go, <laughs> it helps, yeah. in trouble here. Yeah, well, we it? used to say it to him at Sheffield United, but, uh, but he's gone on to do extraordinary things, playing the World Cup <laughs> and getting his move for, for Manchester United and he's a brilliant man as well. Yeah, you say that when he was at Sheffield United, now he's at Man United, you're like, oh, OK. He's got a good shaped head now. Yeah, he's, he's got, got a good, good shaped, shaped head. head. He's got a good shaped head. <laughs> And yeah. that ball seems to find the back of the net. Yeah, it does, yeah. No, brilliant play. The final one, what about the brain of the footballing brain? Uh, the footballing brain for me would be Ferdinand, real Ferdinand. I thought, what a player. Do you know what I mean? What a player. And I know he played for Manchester United mm. and, and, and different things like that, but an absolutely incredible footballer with a brain. He used to read the game so, so well and step in front of people when he had to, drop off when he had to. He knew when to do the right things and used to pop up with the odd goal or two as well. But I just think his brain in terms of how to organise, but... Most importantly, when to step in, when to step onto the ball and when to make tackles and things like that was amazing. Can you teach a football brain? No, no, I don't think so. I think, I think all footballers have football brains, yeah. let's be honest. All, all footballers have football brains, they really do. They know about the game, they know how to play the game, they see different things, but I think them, them real world-class players have that little bit extra. I look at Ruben, who, who for me is one of the best players I've ever played with. He's, I've mentioned it plenty of times before, he's a fantastic young, young talent and what he's done for us in the last few years, but that comes from his brain. And I think you see with Matinho as well, what he's done in his career. I mentioned him before and you see that that's why they're so good because they see different pictures that other, other players don't see. So I think that just sets them, sets them away from him. Perfect. Perfect. Connor. Cheers, Thanks, mate. Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much. Pleasure. Cheers.